behalf of this ceremony, their lives, where we join them together in marriage. This experience would be incomplete without each of you here. I appreciate each of their family and friends being here. You've shared and enriched in their lives, and it is appropriate on this important occasion, this holy event, that you're here to support them and to celebrate with them. Thank you for coming. There's another whose presence we acknowledge, and that is the Spirit of God. It is the love of God that inspires and models this love that James and Brittany desire to express in their marriage. Let's begin the ceremony by thanking God and by inviting Him to bless this marriage. Please bow your heads as I pray. Our Creator, inspire in each of us, witnessing the declaration of James and Brittany's covenant of love with one another today in their marriage. Give them joy for a love like yours that marriage reflects an awareness of your presence in this ceremony and in our lives. A hope that is built on our growing trust of you that blesses here and now and throughout the rest of this young couple's lives and all of us connected here. We celebrate as you do the love of two people we all cherish, James and Brittany. Amen. Please be seated. James and Brittany, there are a few days in our lives that forever stand above the rest. You know, I'm sure that you remember your graduation and your birthdays and have a level of fondness for those. Perhaps the day you trusted the Lord of the universe, Jesus Christ. All those are very memorable and momentous in our lives. But today, the day of your marriage, is a blessed day that marks a new chapter. Your marriage represents a fundamental change that can strengthen the love you share and lead you from this point on, from two paths into one, where you are no longer thinking and acting as separate individuals, praying and playing and giving and loving and serving, guided by choices for which you alone were responsible, to one, one path that follows God, then this awesome and holy time. And it will never be the same going forward. I encourage you to look around at this moment. Even though the sun will be in your eyes, try to capture the eyes of each people that are in this audience and that are standing with you today. Go ahead, take a peek. You, st <laughs> you stand before each of them, your family and friends, to pledge your lives to each other. And they've been important in your past and they'll be important now and they'll be important into the future. And now if you would attend me, All right? I have a few more words to share with you. I ask them to support you and hold you accountable for what you're doing today, for the promises that you're going to make to each other. And you're gonna need their help. And you know, you have my help if you'd like it as well. You know that as a pastor, I've encouraged you to put God at the center of your marriage. And as God blesses your family, to walk with him into the future. We've agreed that you will receive a biblical charge during the ceremony, and we have already prayed that God will bless you and your marriage. I want you to rely on God's strength to love and keep on loving, and you'll find an endless well bubbling up within you that will be like a never-ending spring. There's a scripture chosen for your charge, and it's found in 1 Corinthians 13. And congregation, I invite you to listen and renew your vows with one another, those of you who are married, and... Uh, rekindle that commitment to your spouse. Married couples, you can even reach over, hold each other's hands, and look deeply into each other's eyes. I know that's gonna be hard for some of you, but it's a good practice. I'd like to uh, go ahead and read this charge to you, and I hope that as you go through it, it's not just love, but a choice that you're making for one another. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. Love does not demand its own way. Love is not irritable, and it keeps no record of when it has been wronged. It is never glad about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful, and endures through every circumstance. Love will last forever. James and Brittany, here's your charge. I charge you to ask often for God's help to give selflessly to each other. I charge you to find joy in serving each other and mercy to forgive as often as it takes. I charge you to value the good of the relationship above personal satisfaction. 
I charge you to strive to think and act as one. I charge you to communicate often so that your marriage is mutually satisfying. I charge you to listen to each other and to God. I charge you to dedicate yourself to being the best mate you can possibly be. I charge you to pray for each other daily and never, ever give up. James and Brittany, if you accept this charge, will you both answer by saying, I do? I do. Scripture brings a reality check to our lives and our love, and 1 John 4 further defines true love for us. It describes the source of love, the redemption and wholeness true love brings to each of us through God and loving one another, as well as life change testifying his love, of his love. James and Brittany, today before each of us, your testimony of love for each other is a rich example of God's love. Now, dear friends, it says in 1 John 4, let us continue to love one another, for love comes from God. Anyone who loves is a child of God and knows God. But anyone who does not love does not know God, for God is love. God showed how much he loved us by sending his one and only son into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. This is real love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. Dear friends, since God loved us that much, we surely ought to love each other. No one has ever seen God, but if we love each other, God lives in us and his love is brought to full expression in us. James and Brittany, will you please face each other and join hands for the wedding vows? James, I'm going to read a line at a time. If they voice your true intent, please repeat them after me. I, James, take you, Brittany. I, James, take you, Brittany. To be my lawful wedded wife. To be my lawful wedded wife. To have and to hold from this day forward. To have and to hold from this day forward. For better or for worse. For better and for worse. For richer or poorer. For richer or poorer. In sickness or health. For sickness and health. To love, honor, and cherish. To love, honor, and cherish. And forsaking all others. Forsaking all others. Be faithful to you. Be faithful to you. As long as we both shall live. For as long as we both shall live. And Brittany, if these words express the true intent of your heart, please repeat them after me. I, Brittany, take you, James. I, Brittany, take you, James. To be my lawful wedded husband. To be my lawful wedded husband. To have and to hold from this day forward. To have and to hold from this day forward. For better or for worse. For better or for worse. In sickness or health. In sickness or health. To love, honor, and cherish. To love, honor, and cherish. And forsaking all others. And forsaking all others. Be faithful to you. Be faithful to you. As long as we both shall live. As long as we both shall live. Uh, James and Brittany also bring rings as symbols of their love. And the ring is an appropriate symbol of love. This circular shape symbolizes eternity. I'd like those rings if I could have them. I think we've got one right here. That'll work. Thank you. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll bless these first somehow. All right. We're going to start with uh, this amazing ring that has diamonds in it, I think. Yeah, if I can get the right one. Okay, here. There we go. Look how pretty that is, that's amazing. So, this diamond is cut in such, in such a way that as light shines on it, reflections just blind you in the sun out here. <laughs> I want this diamond to remind you of the infinite number of ways you can express love for one another every time you see it. I want you, James, as you place this ring on Brittany's finger to please repeat after me. Very carefully take it, there you go. James, as you place this ring on Brittany's finger, Say this, please receive this ring. Please receive this ring. As a part of me that is always with you. As a part of me that's always with you. Therefore you are never alone. Therefore you are never alone. And never without my love. And never without my love. As long as we both shall live. As long as we both shall live. Now Brittany, as you place this ring on James' finger, repeat after me, please receive this ring. Please receive this ring. As a part of me that is always with you. As a part of me that is always with you. Therefore you are never alone. Therefore you are never alone. And never without my love. And never without my love. As long as we both shall live. As long as we both shall live. And if you would, let me bless you. Bow your heads for just a moment. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Now James and Brittany, here in the presence of your relatives and friends, 
and in the eyes of God, you have made promises to each other, binding you by the laws of God and the laws of the state. You have sealed these solemn and sacred vows to one another by the giving and receiving of rings, acting in the authority vested in me as a minister of the gospel, and by this state, I take great joy in pronouncing you husband and wife. James and Brittany, I think it would be fitting for you to seal this moment with a kiss. That was brighter than the sun. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Brittany and James Claiborne. Go for it. This I might have to get her attention. Everlasting love. This will be the one I've waited for. This will be the first time anyone. 